You're overthinking. I am overthinking. I thought I was looking for somebody to make me happy. Something that has just been eye-opening for me. It makes me more happy to serve and sacrifice, which in turn makes her happy, (laughs) which in turn makes her serve and sacrifice, and it just becomes a cycle of the things that God, I think, would want for us. We're not going through life alone. (laughs) We're in this together. That picture of being on the same team has been so helpful. In the heat of the moment, I want to lash out in anger and frustration, and it's creating new habits. Coaching helps in that it gives us an actual plan. Step back and remember that if our feelings are hurt, it's usually on accident. Usually they're good-natured people. I mean, usually. My wife is good-natured and she has my best interest at heart. If you're going to learn something really well, you need to teach it. The couples that we've coached, we might be helping them to get through it, but really they're doing the work. And then we learn from their solutions mm-hmm. like, hey, that might work for us too you know that was a really good idea <laughs> I should write that down <laughs> if you're like marriage is hard who is this this is not who i thought i married this is not what i wanted for my marriage relationship and you're like feel stuck it can be embarrassing coming to these people maybe you know them maybe you don't and like here's all my baggage that we're we're talking about we're working through it is a very humbling experience but You know, we have gone through those tough times too, and it's not like, wow, I can't believe what they did. You know, like that's not it at all. It's like, this is the body of Christ being the body of Christ. You know, we're just helping each other out and no one is too good for marriage team or no one is too far off. Most people have no idea how difficult marriage is going to be. Pre-marriage counseling, I believe it's important, but until you've been in the fire, you're not that interested in the water. We almost get no training at all in communication, relationship, and forgiveness, and processing things together. And half the education we do get is bad. It's whatever the picture of conflict resolution was from their home of origin. Early on, like within the first or the second session, there's this opportunity for us to ask the couples about their family of origin. It's like this aha moment, recognizing that when they come into their marriage, they're actually bringing in a playbook that came out of their own family. I love those moments because I feel like that light bulb moment is when they realize, oh my goodness, it's up to them to write their own playbook. True. I think as Christians, we feel like because we're following the Lord, we should have a healthy relationship and not having really any troubles. People do hide it, and I think women in particular just lose hope, and they wait too long to get help, and then it, it's, they feel like it's too late. For one, you bring out the whole topic of how important marriage is to the whole church. Saddest thing in the world is when a couple who looks like they're all doing fine, and then all of a sudden they divorce and both of them leave the church. And it's like, how did we not know that that was going on? Well, it wasn't a safe place to talk about our struggles, This is a hard thing, but it's a God-honoring thing, and it is incredibly important. And I think we're not doing it very well, and Marriage Team helps us do it a little better. Our, our, Our marriage was in shambles, like it was shattered. We hadn't communicated in years. It felt like a hopeless thing. We communicated, we didn't communicate (laughs) well. (laughs) It wasn't a counseling session. I had just done 30 days in rehab, and I've been to a lot of counseling, and a lot of times it felt like a lot of the conversations would skewed toward me. I'm the alcoholic, I'm doing all the bad stuff. With marriage coaching, that didn't happen. It is a very safe place. You get those tools to be able to communicate, and so I finally heard how you felt, and no wonder you respond back uh, the way you do, and the empathy just, it, yeah. it does, it, it breaks my heart. In ways that I would express things, how much pressure I put on and how it made you feel devalued, it broke my heart because it's not ever what I intended. I never would have thought you felt that way because you didn't express it. And learning how I could say things that would really say what my goal was without devaluing him was huge. When I st- started to be able to hear Ken and like actually have him hear me, it was just like this breath of hope and fresh air. I'm like, we actually... We have this um, ability to be intimate that I didn't even know existed. I didn't even know I was missing. After 10 years of marriage, that was the first season where we actually connected and I felt like loved. If we wouldn't have had that, I don't know how we ever could have continued to to do life together. We try to build all the resources that we need in-house. 
You have to be careful when bringing somebody in from the outside. Sometimes people are hurt in that process and you're always trying to protect your body of believers and your leaders. It seems that the church has not done a great job in how it's been able to be victorious over divorce. And I was looking for ways to lighten the load among our pastors to get our people trained in areas that they were gifted in. I was willing to step out of my comfort zone and see what this might be about. I often found myself coming in for the last minute, try to save the marriage. Then you kind of get them to a place where they're off the cliff. Then I'm in this conundrum. It's like, can I continue meeting weekly with this couple? I can't, I don't have enough time to do that with very many. Often they would not get handed off to anything or anybody. And so there was this huge void that we felt. Working with marriage team, we have 15 couples who are able to serve in a very impactful way. Sometimes there are seasons when you go to bed and you have this, this weight of couples in trouble. And although we brought in training from the outside, now we have the resource within working with marriage team. It really gives me peace in my heart and the ability to sleep at night to know we have a tool and we have people who can manage an overload when, when many people are hurting at the same time. We are so excited about the ministry because we are part of saving marriages. I work in, in a school system. I see families falling apart all the time. We were very close to separation. I had just packed up Axel and myself and went to my parents' house. You know, I didn't get married to not be married. So we both agreed and immediately it was the best decision for us. Their story was kind of similar to ours. They gave us a lot of hope that every marriage is savable if you're willing to put in the work. So. I echo everything she just said. We were totally on the cusp of being done. I was skeptical. I think it's partly the way God designed men to be able to be solutionist and problem solvers and have the answers. And there's something intrusive or violating on my quote unquote, on our quote unquote manhood, right? To have to have an additional party or outside source come in and tell us how to resolve our problems. And like, just to be transparent and honest about where we're at, I think that's hard for men to do. I was certainly in a place with my wife during marriage team where I could open up a little bit. Uh, with no judgment, that's a big one, right? It was huge. And I was just kind of able to be who I really was and say how I really felt. If it wasn't for marriage team, we wouldn't be in marriage right now because for sure, it just gave us the tools to come and kind of be empathetic to our partner's perspective. Like I didn't have that, let's just be real. Like I was super about me, I was super self-centered. I was super like my way or the highway. I have been on my own and lived by myself. I would not have been able to make that adjustment in that transition without marriage team coaching. The evaluation of our personalities showed on paper how extremely different we were. <laughs> we, we see intimacy differently. Uh, we learn more about the forms of intimacy and um, creating this plan or this play, if you will, um, on how to make um, our individual intimacies one intimacy and work for our marriage. This is definitely something from God. <laughs> this is actually practical tools that we can apply and it actually works and I just appreciate the work and the availability to us um, and the affordability it was for us because it's priceless. I think the statistic is something like people who were considering divorce and go through marriage team coaching. I think it's something 89%. like 89% of people then don't want to get divorced. And, and it's not just that they don't get divorced, they have hope, they have a flourishing relationship. Our church really embraced it and we had some friends that had gone through the training to be coaches and they said, Bob and Diane, you have to do this. We immediately, the first night, came home so energized. We felt like we had a good marriage, but like everybody, we had some issues that we couldn't get past. We were on that crazy cycle, just, you know, these things would come up often and we just did not know how to deal with it. We were stuck. We were not about to figure that out on our own. That was one of those things we had learned, don't go there because it never ends well and it helped us do that, so we were sold immediately. 
I re remember going through that and going, wow, <laughs> that was so cool. And it's not just us, it's all the other people in the room who were going through yeah, the training. And yet it's so just, simple. Yes. Our church had marriage events, retreats. We've been to a fair amount of them. You come home, it's great. You maybe have a couple takeaways, but it's not but you sustainable. Put, you put the binder on the shelf. Exactly. And then you get back to life. Right. Whereas with coaching and the meeting week after week mm -hmm. and really getting the flywheel turning, it's just so much more successful than just going to a weekend uh, fire hose of information. Right. You can read a book. You can get lots of good techniques and ideas. But the difference is that you're being held in an open forum where you're practicing it. It's like writing with your offhand to begin with. When you've been used to communicating in a certain style over time and only with practice, does it actually become something you use in a crisis? I learned some key skills that I thought, honestly, I thought I was really pretty good at to begin with. But you find out, I found out, I wasn't quite nearly as good as I thought I was. <laughs> we ended up doing Skype coaching. It was almost like being in the room yeah, no barrier. together and sometimes even better. Yeah. Yeah, it, was, it worked. There was so much wisdom in development of the curriculum and the coaching. I don't know anybody who shouldn't go through being coached. The beauty of Mary's team is you have this arsenal of lay people that have a curriculum that's really powerful, can really be sustainable and just multiply. At our church, it's not that big, but we have over 20 couples that coach. I don't know what else there is out there that you learn things the first night that you would practice on the way home and notice a difference right off the bat. Right, after the first night, yeah. I think the image of marriage has been tainted. People don't believe in it. It's sad. You know, when you look at the divorce rate, part of it is because people don't make that triangle, and that is their relationship with themselves and the, with, with God. I've noticed, too, there's this trend amongst our young people. Get a girlfriend, get a boyfriend, and they live together for a few years. They break up, they get another girlfriend, they get another boyfriend. Just sort of shutting it off, starting up over again and again and again, uh, without having the stability, without having the opportunity to grow a solid foundation, with Christ being the center. I believe that's so damaging to a person's soul. We've been a marriage team 10 years now. People within the community that don't go to church hear about marriage team, and so we get a chance to coach, and it's kind of exciting and fun to see that couple grow, um, not only in their marriage, but start to build something in their relationship with the Lord as well. It was just this eye-opening experience to learn how to approach these tough subjects that oftentimes are kind of swept under the rug. I didn't realize how many expectations I had going into marriage. It came out in there the way I expected our marriage to be. And that communication might not have come out as easily or as quickly without our coaches. I remember one thing in particular was, I need you to roar with me. <laughs> like when I get maybe emotional or excited, like I can hit a level like eight, nine, pretty, pretty well. And uh, he's a steady two. I got to a three today. <laughs> you did. So when there's something going on with the kids, I need him to just kind of be on that level with me. So I feel supported so that I'm not in this alone. So our word was roar with me. <laughs> what that means for me is just to be extra attentive to what is going on. So this is not a good time for me to handle making coffee or something. This is an important time for me to know exactly what is causing this level eight <laughs> and what we can do to, to bring it down. So. Or like he could tell me like, you're roaring right now. Like you need to take it down maybe like two notches because you're scaring the kids, like, you know. <laughs> I think that's our cue. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Oh, no, fun. The, the people went to our friends. Actually, it was kind of nerve-wracking when we were like, should we go to friends or should we just see a stranger that we're never going to have to see again? And now here we are five years later it's because we were open and honest and, and we were more vulnerable. It helped deepen that relationship. We can say anything and there's really no judgment. I know that they love us. It means, like, you're close to your husband and stuff, but it's just nice to have outside support and outside opinions and outside like re resources as far as like, if I need something, like they're gonna be right over, you know? I think my life without them would just be so sad or like just so lonely because they're just a part of me now. So was that like 10 or was that? <laughs> <laughs> that was a good 10. <laughs> <laughs>
Sorry. I didn't roar with you, right? I know, Sorry. right? <laughs> We were created to live life together. We need to encourage that. And I think that independence, to be alone and to do it my own thing, it's a tool of the enemy to always bring someone into separation. And that idea of, I gotta manipulate you in order to get what I want out of you. It's like a business agreement. You are not a business partnership. You are one together. Those tools aren't just for our marriage. I mean, what I've taken away from it, and I know what Ken's taken away, it's been with how we relate with our kids, how we hear them, how we problem solve with them. This is where it's at. Family is where it's at. And this is where Satan is really trying to attack and break things down. We're going to help change the image of marriage. You want to have a good marriage, but why not have a great marriage? Why not completely thrive? 